Now let's move on to look at what are the factors that will affect the intertemporal budget constraints and then how those factors affect the choices of consumption and savings. So if we look at this equation in here, we will see that the C1 and C2, which is related to the consumption in the first and the second period are the choice variable. In economics, we call it the indulgence variable. On the other hand, the Y1, Y2, A0, and R, which represents the income for the first period, the income in the second period, the initial wealth, and the real interest rate are given. In economics, we call it the exogenous variables. So then, when we want to look at what are the factors that will get change the intertemporal budget constraint, we are talking about when those given factors got changed, how will that affect the intertemporal budget constraints, and then how will that affect the choice of consumption and saving decisions of an individual. Therefore, the factors we want to look at that changes the intertemporal budget constraints includes the changes in the Y1, the changes in the Y2, the changes in A0, and the changes in R. And then when we look at the equation in more detail, you may notice that the changes in Y1, Y2, and initial wells, and the changes on the R will affect the equation differently. That is because when the changes in Y1, Y2, and A0, it only changes the present value of the lifetime resources. However, when there are the changes in the R, it not only affects the present value of the lifetime resources, but it also affects the slope of the line. Therefore, in the following, when we want to talk about how does these factors affect the consumption and saving decisions, we want to separate the discussion into two types. One is related to the changes in the first period income, second period income, and the initial wealth. The other is related to the changes in the real interest rate. Now let's look at the first type of factor changes and see how does that affect the consumption and saving decisions. Before we talk about the results of how the consumption and saving got changed, I want you to first recall something about the tendency of the consumption and saving decisions we mentioned earlier that is about the tendency of the consumption smoothing that is when a person that has its income increase or resources increase an individual will have the tendency to increase not only the current period's consumption but also all the future consumptions in other words, if an individual faces the resource increase, that individual will choose not only to increase the first period consumption and also the second period consumption under the two periods model. So then now we want to move on to look at the outcome for how this factor got change affects the consumption and saving decisions. So we want to highlight a couple key information below. We want to think about how well this factor affects the first period income, the second period income, the first period consumption, second period consumption. And then we will have a better idea about how well that affects the first period savings and the second period saving. The first period saving will equal the Y1 minus C1. But for the second period saving, given that it is a two period model, this individual died by the end of the second period. Therefore, for this individual, for whatever factor got changed that is related to the first period income change, the second period income change, and the initial wealth got changed, the saving in the second period will remain as zero no matter what happened. Okay, so now we want to begin to look at each factor in detail. The first factor we want to look at is that when there is an increase in the initial wealth, how will that affect the first period income, second period income, the first period consumption, the second period consumption, and the savings. It turned out that when the initial wealth got increased, it implies that the first period income and the second period income remain the same. 
That is because in a lot of the economic discussion, when we say something got changed, we always imply that all the other things remain the same. Given that we claim that the initial wealth got increased and say nothing else, it implies that the first period income is kept the same, the second period income is kept the same, and for sure, the R, which is the in real interest rate, also kept the same. So then when the, the initial wealth got increased, while the first period income and the second period income remain the same, we know that the aggregated effect tell us that all the resources that individual got increases. Therefore, we know for sure that the first period in consumption and the second period consumption both increase. Then how does that imply about the savings? It turned out that given that the Y1 is fixed, the C1 got increased, so then the Y1 minus C1 will get decreased. You will say, hey, wait a minute. For this individual, got the initial wealth got increased. It's as if this individual got more savings balance in the saving account. Then why the savings got decreased? Well, that is because in economics, when we are talking about the savings, we are not talking about the total amount of the balance that you have or you keep in the banking account. We are talking about the flow. The flow in here is related to the first period income and the first period consumption. Given that the first period income, which is the Y1, got fixed and you choose to consume more, then the total flow, that is the saving, decreases. So then you may still feel doubt that why you could, how could that happen? That the initial wealth got increased and the income doesn't get affected at all. But when I got my initial wealth got changed, will that I receive more? Um, in fact, in here, we are not thinking about the scenario like that. We are talking about that um, you are an ordinary individuals that living in Taiwan, for example. But then someday when you wake up, you got an email notice that says, hey, congratulations, sir. Your great grandfather somehow has a land somewhere in Africa and it turned out to have oil, which means that you now can inherit the oil field from your great grandfather. Because of that, you do nothing, you receive nothing, but when you wake up now, you know you got something more that is you are born with. Before the email notice, you don't know that. You do not factor that in when you are making the consumption and saving decisions. But now you know that. So then you can factor that in into your consumption and saving decisions. Then under that case, you are in fact not receiving anything more on that day you receive the income. But you simply got new information about your total resources. As you know, your total resources got increased. So then you will choose to consume more, not only today, but also for all the future days. Of course, that this email can be a fraud, so don't be cheated. Now we want to move on to look at uh, when the current income got increased, how will that affect the consumption and saving decisions? It turned out that when the first period income got increased, it implies that the first period income increased, but the second period income remained the same. Because of that, again, due to the tendency of consumption smoothing, we know our total resources got increased. Therefore, we know our consumption in the first period and the second period both got increased. Then, from looking at the Y1 minus C1, given that the first period income increased and the first period consumption got increased, it's, it's not that intuitive to infer the direction of change for the first period saving. But we can look at it from the second period's uh, income and consumption, and then we will be able to infer that. Given that the second period income remained the same, but the second period in consumption got increased. Therefore, we know it has to be that we save more in the first period, then we can afford to consume more in the second period. Therefore, in here, we know the saving for the first period got increased. 
The other way you can think about it, which is less intuitive, is that when we receive more income in the first period, due to the tendency of the consumption smoothing, we will choose to save some part of our income for future use. Therefore, the saving got increased. So you can think about the consumption and saving decisions for the case that the first period income increased uh, from two perspectives. Either way works, depending on which one you prefer, that's fine as long as you can get the answer right. Then we want to look at another scenario, which is that the second period income increase. When the second period income increase, it infer that the first period income remained the same, but only the second period income got increased. Due to the tendency of the consumption smoothing that we know when the total resources got increased, we will choose to increase our not only the first period consumption and the second period consumption. Given that the savings equals the first period income minus the first period consumption, and given the first period income is the same, but the first period consumption increase, then we know the saving should fall. Now we want to move on to see when there is a change in the real interest rate, how will that affect the consumption and saving decisions? It turned out that when the real interest rate got changed, it will affect the present value of the future income. It will also affect the future value of savings. Finally, it will also affect the relative price of future consumption. As we may recall what we learned before, we say that the relative price of the future consumption equals minus 1 plus r. Therefore, when the real interest rate got changed, it will affect the relative price of the future consumption. So now we already know the changes in the real interest rate will result in these three effects. So let's think about it in more detail so that we can digest it. When there is an increase in the real interest rate, for example, then it will decrease the present value of the future income. Because when we want to compute the present value of the future income, we write it as y2 divided by 1 plus r. When the r increased, then 1 plus r got increased, then 1 over 1 plus r got decreased. Therefore, an increase in the r will decrease the present value of the future income. How about the future value of the savings? When the R got increased, then the savings will be Y1 minus C1, and then the future value of saving will be this whole term multiplied by 1 plus R. Therefore, we know that when the R got increased, then this term will get increased. Finally, when the R got increased, the relative price of future consumption will decrease. That is because the relative price of future consumption equals minus the whole thing 1 plus R. When the R increase, this term will fall, and which means that the relative price of future consumption becomes cheaper. So then, who cares about the present value of future income? Only the individuals who borrow? That is because when we borrow, we are somehow enjoying our future income. So then we need to pay back the amount we borrowed in the future. Then when the interest got increased, then it means that when we borrow, we need to pay back more in the future. So then the present value of the future income got decreased and our total resources that we can use become less. So then the increase in the R will affect the borrower negatively. On the contrary, we want to ask who care about the increase in the future value of savings. Turn out to be someone who lent or someone who saved will care about how well the changes in the R affect the future value of the saving. When the future value of saving got higher, it means that the lender will benefit from the increase in the interest rate. So then, given the changes in the R affects the lender and borrower in that it affects the resources they can enjoy, so we call this R the income effect. So then the income effect will affect on the borrower and lender differently. So then, how about the changes in the relative price of future income? Who will be affected by such a change? It turned out that no matter the borrower or the lender, both got affected by such a change. 
since the behavior change in here is in response to a cheaper future consumption and higher relative price of today's consumption. So one will prefer to substitute away from current consumption because now it becomes more expensive toward future consumption because it becomes less expensive. So we call this the substitution effect. Now let's look at the income effect and the substitution effect in more detail to see how well that affects the consumption and saving decisions. So now let's begin to look at an example for the implication of the income effect. It turned out that to the lender, when the R got increased, the lender benefits from the R increase because now the lender can enjoy more future consumptions. They, so they have more resources. Given that the lender has more resources and each individual has the tendency of the consumption smoothly, so we know that the lender will choose to consume more in the first period and the second period. But then given that the first period income and the second period income remain the same, so it implies that the lender should decrease the savings. So then how about for the borrower? For the borrower, it somehow got hurt by the increase in the real interest rate. That is because the amount they need to pay back in the future becomes more. Or you can think about it in terms of the present value. The present value of the lifetime resources become less. And that's the amount that the borrower want to uh, enjoy. So then we say that when the R got increased, the borrower faces less resources. Because of that, the borrower will choose to consume less for both periods. Given that the first period income and the second period income remain the same, so the saving should increase for a borrower. So then, how will the increase in an R affect the borrower and lender from the substitution effect perspective? It turned out that for the substitution effect, we are talking about the changes in the relative price of the future consumptions. And an increase in the R will decrease the relative price of the future consumptions. So no matter it is for the borrower and lender, both of them enjoys a less expensive future consumption. So then both of them will prefer to consume more in the future. Because of that, the savings should increase. And then the first period consumption should fall and the second period consumption can increase. Up to this point, we have been talking about the consumption and saving decisions from an individual's perspective. Of course, that if all the individuals are exactly the same, then the behavior of one individual can be regarded as the aggregated behavior of a nation. But in here, we already know that it turned out that the behavior for lender and borrower will be different. So then how will the consumption and saving decision got impacted when there is an R increase from the national's perspective? So for a nation as a whole, we say that the substitution effect tells us no matter the individual is the lender or borrower, both will choose to increase the savings. However, from the perspective of income effect, we know that for the lender, the savings should decrease and for a borrower, the savings should increase. Given that the lender should have someone to borrow so that it can become a lender, so you can think about it as a zero-sum game. So the effect of these two can be somehow canceled and then the substitution effect will dominate the, how the R change affects the saving at the national level. Given that the income effect somehow got canceled between the borrower and lender, and the substitution effect dominates the outcome for how the R change affects the national savings. So in general, we believe that when the R increase, the national savings should increase. And this is a widely accepted relationship. But we also admit that the effect is not that strong. Now we complete a discussion related to the factor that will change the lifetime budget constraint and how does that affect the consumption and saving decisions.